You like, ball? you like baseball? I do like baseball. Well, that's what the Bills are playing right now. Ooh. <laughs> Subscribe now, and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. Moneyball, Moneyball. Two names you guys might want to take a look into. Drew Hickey and Drew Locke. Isn't Drew Locke the name of a quarterback? They're both Drews. I know, but isn't there... Wasn't no. there a Drew Locke that was Am a Am I wrong? Am I wrong in that? Dennis Hickey and Dennis Locke. Yeah, there we go. Idiot. You know why? Because I was looking at tape of Drew yesterday. <laughs> so you talk about Dennis Locke and Dennis Hickey. Yeah. All right. Two guys that are basically going to be running the show. Pro player personnel, director of research and strategy. Um, it was interesting enough, the, the Dennis Locke, dude, he's got a master's in statistics and a PhD in statistics. Like, this guy, he breaks down numbers for a living. Let's put it that way. Uh, and the thing that got me into it was we were talking about, okay, they got Gore. Okay, all right, from Miami. I already knew they had a statistical guy from 2017, right. which was Hickey, <clears throat> um, who came over. He was a former GM of the, of the Dolphins. Yeah. So he comes over, okay. And then when they finally signed Perry, I'm like, wait a minute, two running backs from Miami. Let me take a little deeper dive in this. If you want to look at the 2015 draft of the Miami Dolphins, and who they picked and who got picked right after that, it's absolutely scary to see where Moneyball can steer you wrong. Yeah, that's um, what happens, right? Because everybody thinks Moneyball is great, but the truth is you end up taking, you take more risks by playing Moneyball. What happens is this. If, if you don't have Moneyball, in my, this is my estimation, this is my statistical breakdown, right. okay? If you don't have Moneyball, you draft a guy, either he's really going to be really bad or he's going to just be awesome. It's like sink or swim. Moneyball just gets the guys that are in here, like in the middle. So he's not going to be really great. He's not going to be terrible. He's going to be serviceable. We have enough of those guys already. We do have a lot. In my mind, we already have enough serviceable players, 69 guys on the roster right now. Yeah. All right, you have enough serviceable guys. What do we need? We need guys more over here that are the horses. So this guy in that draft, um, in that draft, they took Devontae Park, mm -hmm. 14. Yep. You know who's taking 15? Melvin Gordon. Aww. You know who's taking 16? Kevin Johnson, who's on the bill right now. You know who was taking, I think, 49? Mitch Morse. 52nd? Jordan Phillips. Does that uh, name ring a bell? This feels like, this feels like In my buyer's end. remorse. Yeah. So you want I to talk about that they all would have been they all would have funneled into free no, no, no. agency but, around the same time, but no. But my point is this: we touted them for picking up Jordan Phillips. And, hey, they kept their ear to the ground, you know, ear to the ground. They found this guy. And Hickey, they already knew him. He already there. drafted him. Yeah, Hickey was already. Hickey drafted him already. And then who was taking fifty third? That tackle, Jake Fisher. Who's <laughs> now our blocking tight end. So a guy taking two spots after the guy they drafted as, as a wide receiver. And a guy taken right after who they signed the team. You know what I mean? I know, like I said, you, like you just said, all those contracts when it came up again. But could have been like, eh, we got these two guys on the board right now. Which one do you want? Mm -hmm. All right, let's take Phillips. And then Fisher goes next. Yeah. You know what I mean? Feliciano was in that draft. He was drafted like 120th. But the, the running backs that they passed on, they ended up taking Jay Ajayi in that draft in the fifth round. They had four fifth-round picks. What is the love about Jay Ajayi? I don't know. But they pass on... Melvin Gordon. Gurley went before. Oh, well, yeah, Gurley was off the board. So they, had, they they passed on Melvin Gordon. They passed on Duke Johnson. They passed on Tevin Coleman. They passed on Amir Abdullah, which we can't blame him. Um, they also passed – there was one more running back in there that was – like, they passed on all of these – let all of these guys go. They took the defensive tackle, uh, Jordan Phillips, and then they didn't have a third, and then they had a fourth, and then – you text me who it was. Basically, who, what, yeah. They ended up just going into, they passed on all these running, all the running backs that we wanted them to take. Mm -hmm. they, free yeah, agency, they walked they by They passed again. all of them. Yeah. They walked by him again. So that's why everyone, we, that's the answer to the question, why did they take Tevin Coleman? Well, they didn't have him high on their board, which means that that statistical breakdown, and now, and now like I said, 
just to refresh everybody's memory, this is when Locke and Hickey were both in Miami together. That was their first official draft together. Right. But here's the scariest part that I didn't tell you. Over those drafts when they were there, when Hickey and Locke were there, there weren't there weren't great players coming off the board. I mean, they got Drake in the third. They don't they didn't draft a running back over the third round. Drake was the highest. Draft. Drake was the highest yeah. in the third round. <laughs> But the thing was, I took a look back at when uh, Hickey was in Tampa. He was in Tampa from 04 to 2013. That's a long time. AG, was you, he AGM there? He was a uh, uh, director of college scouting. Okay. So a lot of the okay. players they get, um, yeah, that's, he yeah. was with Gruden, okay. he was with Dungy, he was with Greg Shiano and Raheem Morris. Okay. All right. So he was with all those guys. You look at the drafts from 04 to 13. I suggest I suggest you guys, if you want, I'll put a link in the description of their drafts. You let me know who, who who's who in there. There's nobody in there. There's probably three names you could fi- you could figure out in those nine drafts. They were bad. They were awful. They were bad. So if you're using that as your test, and this when these guys get together, they don't draft very well. It's terrifying to me that they're both in Buffalo now. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Hickey. I'm not, I've never really been a big no. fan of Hickey, but I'm, he's here. He's, he's filling a purpose, but the question becomes how much of an influence does he really have on the process, right? So We didn't sign any of these guys in the in offseason that they already passed on during the draft. Right, yep. All the running backs they passed on yeah. in free agency. So And then they have taken Gore, and then they take another running back from Miami. So I believe he has heavy influence in what they're doing. And they re-signed Jordan Phillips. But yeah. they signed Jordan Phillips when he got here. Yeah. So, like, that, that already happened. But, and then the other thing is this. We talked about Ty Naseki, how he took a break from football for three years, but he went, he actually played arena. That was my yeah. mistake. I didn't see that. But he went to play arena. This this other kid, Perry, he's got a gap in his playing time. I don't know. I, I, CFL, arena, I don't know. But he, he was in the NFL for a couple of years. So, is that what their money ball statistical calculators start to tell them? Like, hey, these guys don't have – a lot of time in the NFL. They're going to be cheap. Maybe they can be. I mean, unless you just want to win the special teams battle every week, right? That's that's really all they got. The thing that I run, the thing that I find about you know the money ball thing is again in baseball it's a little bit more segmented because there's multi there's multiple facets to the game that a player could be excellent in and terrible on the other side, and you hope to develop those those you know the yeah. skill set where. You know, they're not so great. So hitting and fielding are two completely different segments of the game. Whereas in football, it's not, there's not really, you can't really drive analytics home as much, right? Because, um, you know, oh, this guy covers more ground per square, you know, more ground per second than, you know, this player. Okay, well, they're measuring that now. They measure how many miles these guys run in college. Did you take just a subtle dig? At Pro Football Focus? Perhaps I did. <laughs> Good, because I love when you do that. Yeah. I, I think Pro Football Focus is great for some things. I don't think that you can use Pro Football Focus as the source of truth for everything. Is there a perfect system? I don't think there is a perfect no, system. God, but I, no. I'm not, I don't, th- I don't take everything Pro Football Focus says as gospel. I don't. You know, there's some stuff that they do very, very, very well. Yes. But there's other stuff that... As, but the, the whole Moneyball thing is the thing that drives me nuts. Because you see players taken after Miami mm-hmm. um, when they were there. And I was like, wow, these guys are really good. What did they think that they had in this guy over that guy? So I know that you look at the history and they screwed it up royal, mm-hmm. right? But don't you think there's a lesson to be had there? Like, I joked with you on the phone the other day when you yeah. brought this topic up. I'm like, don't you think they're looking at each other like, maybe we should drive it down the middle this time? Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. this was the front nine. These other organizations, that was the front nine. You're in a scramble tournament, right? You're you're playing you're playing golf. You're in a, you're in a, mm-hmm. a, you're, you're got to take the best drive here. And they've been all over the place on the front nine. Now you're on the back nine and you look at it. Because they might not get another shot with an NFL organization with as much as they've kicked around and as poorly as they've done. You're in Buffalo now. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the slide that you've had. You went from Tampa, not a great organization, to Miami, uh, equally not as good an organization, to Buffalo. 
tell me where on the roller coaster of your NFL career you're on, because it looks to me like the cart's pull, about to pull in and you're about to have to get off to let other people on. So if you're them, I'm thinking you're super conservative. And you look at this free agency class, and what have they been? Super conservative. They've gone with assets that they are guaranteed. They know what happens with them. Yeah. So you walk into the draft, and while well, before you could look at, you know, they're going to try and, you know, find talent and money ball here and analytics here. But maybe these guys are just going to take that seven iron off the tee and just pop it right down the middle and say, I'll – it's 165, at least it's in play. Or maybe I have more faith in humanity and people learning their lesson than you do. Yeah, hopefully. But <laughs> you got to think, when they both took over, one of their first things was putting a transition tag on Charles Clay, and the Bills ended up signing him. So they didn't want Clay. Yeah, no. They've proven that again. Yeah. They didn't want Clay. Yeah. They never drafted a quality tight end. He leaves Miami. They draft Mike Gusecki. He gets out of Tampa. They draft OJ Howard. So, so you the writing might Hawkinson, be on the wall. TJ Hawkinson might be at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about Hawkinson. We talked about Oliver. We talked about maybe a running back or mm-hmm. maybe you know this guy, that guy, Sam linebacker, safe, not safety, but a corner. Where do they go? Where do, what does the money ball calculator tell them at nine? Mm-hmm. Where do we go? We think these eight will be off. Mm-hmm. This is our guy at nine. Or if there are more than one guy, if there's more than one guy on there that they could take in Moneyball, it's going to come down to McDermott. Well, Moneyball would tell you to trade down. It should. I mean, Moneyball tells you to trade down. You want more I assets for down. less dollar. That's what you want. But the Bills have plenty, plenty of assets. They got 69 players in the roster. I would trade back and try to acquire 2020 picks. I agree with that totally. And I trade. I trade nine to 15 for next year's first in a in a heartbeat. Oh God, yeah. If you're Who's Washington, 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 you're Washington. You need a quarterback. Carolina's sixteen, Bad. right? I think so. Yeah. Seventeen is the Giants now. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Giants have six and seventeen. So the Giants, if I if I'm New York, because I just wrote that article for thirty two themes in thirty two days on htagsports.com. I just wrote that article. If you're the Giants, and you're sitting at six and fourteen. You're bundling both those picks and calling Arizona, and saying six fourteen. How, tell me how Arizona loses here. Don't get me wrong. I know Cliff Kingsbury loves Kyler Murray. They're going to lose I know that a lot Kyler, this year. <laughs> I know that Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk, their wide receiver, played college together. Right? They they mm. they were in college together. That was his quarterback. Yeah. Right? All right. So I get it. But if you're Arizona, you really don't have to draft Kyler Murray. No. But you could. I don't know why that's coming six, up. You could go six to fourteen. Well, teams are calling about Josh Rosen and. Arizona's asking for a first for Josh Rosen. Crazy to give up a first for Josh Rosen. Crazy. Well, you got four years with him. You, you, right, you do. You do still have four years remaining. Mm-hmm. But if you're the Giants, you're bundling six and 14 to get to one or two. Okay. Right? San Francisco's there, too. Right. So that drops Arizona back down, right? Which means that Arizona still might be open for business to trade for another quarterback. If you're Buffalo at nine, there might be a team like Washington trying to jump in. And Washington's only going to be able to give up so much. Mm-hmm. A first this year and a first next year, take it. Snyder, take it. Snyder's insane it. enough to do that. Don't even don't even think about it. That's what Buffalo gave up for 10, or what Buffalo got for 10. They got Casey's first and next year's first. Yeah, because they moved more than 10 spots back. Right. They went from nine, they went from 10 to 27. Yeah, so swap third rounders. Swap okay. second rounders. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. whatever you have to do to get next year's first, you're doing it. Because you've got too many draft picks right now. You got more picks than you need. So Moneyball mm. tells you to trade back, acquire future assets, because the, the 2020 draft picks, this is the perfect time to get them because as you get into the season, those draft picks become more valuable. Yeah. Right now, those draft picks have less value. Depending on how, so how good you, you plan to perform. Exactly, because there's a variable. You don't know how the team's going to yeah. perform. Yeah. Right. That's why when KC, I would have made the trade with KC at 10. Yeah. First and next year's first for ten, and they're going up to get a quarterback. Which exactly, means you they're think gonna they're going to start, right? And really you think they're going to be yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, of course you're making that trade all the time. But of course, KC just shoves it right up Buffalo's tail. Yeah, thanks, Reed. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate buddy. it. You make the playoffs, and then we did it too. We I know. Up. Whoops. Twenty twenty one. What do you need? We got to get rid of Glenn. Yeah, we got twenty. We got. We got to get rid of Glenn to get up there. Yeah, since since when has Buffalo had problems? Oh, we got too many picks in the twenties. <laughs> I love when they trade back when they traded back 
in the 27, we were yeah. doing the draft show, and they and we were like, hey, guys, the Bills never draft here. This is interesting. Yeah. This is foreign territory yeah. for them. No, this is weird. Because there's nobody drafting around them that has a huge need. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>